as good a job as the medical system has done at selling a machine concept, the food industry has done at selling poison. Yeah. And it's up to each person to take responsibility for the fact that the mirror is a very truthful um, device. Yeah. Meaning, pay attention. I don't think people realize just how much the quality of your food and everything else can impact your fertility. So I don't think too many people are aware until they're trying and now they can't. Right. And now we're now we're stuck with with laying foundations. What it made me think of is is, is I'll do this with you. A, a little process. If if I said to you Nathan, you're in training to be X and Your program is going to begin by carrying five pounds every day, and it's going to, within a short period of time, turn into 10 pounds, and you can't put this down. you got to carry it everywhere. And this is going to keep going up, and by the time nine months goes around, you're going to be carrying somewhere between 70 and 100 pounds everywhere you go, upstairs, downstairs, bending over, washing yourself, and we're going to stuff it nicely right in your midsection and it's going to get in the way it's going to be cumbersome your gait's going to change how comfortable you are in chairs your ability to get in and out of chairs uh, your ability to run will be significantly hampered your cardiovascular capacity will be taxed you will be hungrier than normal uh, you know that that would be quite an athletic yeah endeavor yeah well what person in the world that is a woman who came into the world and is 30 something years old to 40 years old doesn't already know that every woman in the world goes on that exact athletic training program yeah you see the logic i'm saying yeah why are people so why why is this so abstract for people why is it so abstract why is it not so obvious we all watch women grow and struggle and carry tremendous amounts of extra body weight and unfortunately many women use their pregnancy as an excuse to just eat anything yeah you know i've watched it over and over again most people have seen it they've got a license to just make themselves even more miserable yeah but the, but but i'm i'm saying this this whole thing shows us how far we've gotten from a common sense connection to the reality of the natural process right of being a human being that we can ignore the prerequisites and laws and principles of nature and have somebody biohack us and throw the progressive weight on us over nine months without doing any kind of conditioning, physically, emotionally, mentally, or often even spiritually. Yeah. You know, some people end up in a place where they're they're really, really determined to have kids. Something's not right. And they do go on that path of fertility treatments. They have a baby. They have a beautiful pregnancy. And that is possible for people. And a lot of those people have already been taking every step that they possibly can, and it doesn't work out. But when you consider just how much of these fertility treatments are being used, how many interventions, how many C-sections we're doing, for sometimes good reason, because there's a pregnancy complication that would have been otherwise completely preventable. So, you know, I, I, want, I want to honor the people that are doing that. But what you're, what you're saying is very, very true. And by the way, I want to correct you on something. 70 to 100 pounds is not what any women are gaining. Some women are. Most women are going to expect to gain 25 to 40 pounds. But still, I've got a 40-pound kettlebell out there. Carrying that around for several months is going to be really tricky. So I just well, I wanted to add that in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think you you you're right. I would just say that in my own life I've observed women commonly gaining 50 pounds and I've seen some go up to 100 pounds. Yeah, it's a lot um, of water weight, a lot of extra blood volume. And I think yeah. a lot of that is because of what I said, they they just let go of themselves and yeah. they fall. You see once you start eating sugar, you get cravings for sugar because yeah, you're yeah. eating a, a drug that Candace Pert, one of the top 
experts in human physiology in the world says is as addictive as morphine or heroin. So, you know, part of the lack of education is that women don't really realize what they're getting themselves into if they start just grazing on addictive foods and these things are engineered to be addictive. Um, so I was just using it as a metaphorical description of saying you could gain 100 pounds. Absolutely. You could gain Absolutely. 70 and you gained 70 with Mana and 80 with Zoe. She did. And, and she takes such good care of herself. And she's five foot one. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and this personal responsibility piece, again, comes back to like, you have to be an adult here. You're about to bring a baby into the world. And I know it seems like tough love and everything else, it's just the facts. Like it's it's that simple. You're going to do this thing. You're going to even need more. You're going to have to even pay more attention to your to your own health, your relationship, etc. When this baby's in the world. So you'd asked me about the challenges of IVF. What is the impact of this? I'd say another big one is um, not only are we disconnecting you from nature. You know, we're abandoning the natural and we're adopting this this mechanical view of the human body and conception, but we haven't addressed the upstream issues that, that led you to, to the REI doctor, the reproductive endocrinology and infertility specialist mm -hmm. in the first place. So it's no surprise then that you know women develop preeclampsia. They have a lifetime much higher risk of developing hypertensive disorders, heart disease, et cetera, later. Same with gestational diabetes and diabetes later in life. This is the time to get all of this stuff ironed out so that even if you do end up with IVF, your soil is laid down, you know who you are, you've got the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual dialed in. If we just jump right to IVF because, hey, you tried for a year and it didn't work without addressing all of this stuff, mm -hmm. we haven't done you a, 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 a great benefit as a medical establishment because we haven't fixed any of those things. Whether it's relevant to your fertility or not, like these things are important. This is how you live your life. And how you live your life is how you do everything, right? Yeah, how you do anything is how you do everything. One yeah. of the things that I'd like to hear, because a lot of my listeners are men, what's the role of a male in this process from, from particularly in this regard? Like if, if you want to get you and your wife or your partner want to have a child and it's not happening, and then you end up with in vitro fertilization um, or just the, the, the stress, because I've seen this inability to get pregnant destroy marriages. Yeah. Um, I've literally known women who, who found out it was the husband that was infertile and got so frustrated that they just left the relationship because they yeah. wanted a pregnant, to be pregnant more than they wanted their infertile husband. Yeah. Um, but, but really what I'm saying is what are some of the things that men maybe need to be more aware of or... Uh, how could men be more informative or supportive of their partner if it turns out to be that in vitro fertilization is uh, a necessary go-to if they want to go further than they can go naturally? I think that a lot of young men are underappreciating the role that they play in this process. Of course, it takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. And um, your, you know, your your partner has eggs. You've got sperm. They've been there since you were in the uterus with your mother. Um, and the way you live your life is going to um, re be reflected in your sperm count, your sperm motility, the morphology, meaning the shape of the sperm. Are they able to swim in one direction? Are they spinning in circles in the vagina? So you're saying that my sperm is my mother's fault? Because if it is, it sure gets me out of a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to take your mom completely off the hook. But of course, if you were born with suboptimal sperm, you're going to make a lot more of it. And, you know, it used to be back, um, we're conjecturing here because we weren't looking at sperm under the microscope necessarily 100 years ago. But over the past 10, 20 years, we've seen a precipitous decline in the yeah. number of sperm, the, which is called sperm count, motility. Are they swimming correctly in the yeah. morphology? And it's not recent. I've got articles right here on my bookshelf. It's been declining that, for decades. Yeah. It, yeah. It, you, Lady Eve Balfour talks about it in, in the, the Living Experiment, the, let's see, The Living Soil and the Holly Experiment, pub, first published in, I think, 1948. Yeah. She shows studies in there that men's sperm counts had dropped on average approximately 50%. Yeah. And that by eating a diet of only 25% organic, they could get a, a nice boost. And at 50% organic, and this is 
1948. Yeah. Right? So think of how much more toxic the environment is now. At 50%, men could get close to or approach the sperm counts that were considered to be normal, which I don't know what it was, two million ejac- two sperm, two million sperm for ejaculation. It's, it was way more than that because now it's considered like 10 to 15 or so I think is normal. Yeah, so, I can't remember the stats. That's a lot. I mean, most guys don't realize and, and let me tell you, that's common, but that sure as hell ain't normal. The fact that we've got so few compared to maybe 100 years ago. Yeah, I'm just simply saying that this issue is not a new issue. No, right? It's an no, old issue all. and it's yeah. just getting worse. Yeah, I so since we're talking talking about this, we were going to get into sperm later, but for the men out there, if you take ejaculate, send it to the lab and they give you an analysis, you want as many healthy swimmers as you possibly can. It just takes one. But there's all these other variables that come into play, especially pertaining to your partner's health. So women carry the burden of this. It becomes hopeless and the woman is carrying it and thinking I can't get pregnant. And the guy's over there with his cell phone in his pocket, yeah. living next to a cell phone tower, yeah. eating you know Arby's and Chick Fil A all day. Junk, yeah. So what I tell people is like, listen, the man is just as responsible. We're going to get into conscious conception and connection and everything else, but you know some adjustments to lifestyle that I get all of my fertility couples on, even if they have a normal sp- semen analysis, they say it real quickly, like, oh yeah, he's got he's got good sperm. If you're not, if it's not working, it's it's not sufficient. You get a man unhealthy enough, and that sperm, like any other, if, look, if things can cross the blood-brain barrier, they can certainly get into your semen. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. you know, yeah. the, one of the things is, is getting into the, the mechanism by which the egg selects the sperm, that egg's got to be very, very careful. Yeah. And so if you got a bunch of toxic sperm- Right. The door's going to stay closed. That's I'm right. sorry. Go right. take a fucking shower. Like, I need different sperm. I need yeah. a different partner. I, I need something tricky. that I can work with here. Yeah. So there's there's a, a big man's role right there. You, and my point being, just because you have sperm doesn't mean they're healthy, and it doesn't mean they're that your seminal fluid's not toxic. You know, I'm a therapist. I've been one for almost 40 years. That's probably older than most people listening to this podcast <laughs> of, of, uh, in their whole life. And I have seen firsthand how unconscious, look, I live on a 14 acre property and we have many construction crews and contractors and air conditioning guys and tile guys and roof guys and well drillers and everything else. Hmm. And I am appalled at the shit they live on. Yeah. I look at this and go, what in the freaking hell right. do you think is going to happen to you? And they're all walking around with their bellies distended, their backs hurting, their knees arthritic, their joints arthritic. And as soon as they find out what I do, I get pinned with a billion questions. So I hand them my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy. And so there's no need talking to you until you've read this. Read, read this book. <laughs> and and then your questions will be answered. But my point is, is that as good a job as the medical system has done at selling a machine concept, the food industry has done at selling poison. Yeah. And it's up to each person to take responsibility for the fact that the mirror is a very truthful um, device. Yeah. Meaning pay attention 